Hey folks, welcome back to another Battling Brushes where Rob and I are painting through Blood Bowl, a, a fantasy sports game from Games Workshop. And uh, we've pretty much painted each of the different positions and showed you the process for each of those. But today, we're actually going to take uh, some time and focus on basing the model, the actual uh, where the, the piece of plastic that the model is standing upon and how you can dress that up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get down to the table. We're gonna let Rob go first today, and uh, then I'll close out the segment at, after him. So let's see what Rob did. Well, let's take a look at bases today. Now there's two ways you can do bases and, and the reason that you do it two ways is because of the use and the positioning of the models on the pitch. Okay, one I'm going to show you, you just put a green on there and then you're going to take and put a decal, your decal, your number decal so you can see it so you don't have to keep picking up the pieces. The other is to put down some grass and then put it on the player but you run the risk of the numbers being blocked and not knowing which guys where so that kind of runs into a risk a little bit especially if you have two catchers out there and you played a couple games and they happen to up their skill and one has is a better skill than another one and if they're all in a close quarter which you hope they're not because they're going to get killed you really kind of want to be able instead of picking up and moving pieces around and maybe knocking something over which could be irritating to the person that you play. So there's a couple different ways and I've seen a lot of beautiful bases. These you also put the ball in the little hole there so that can be a problem too if you really do the base too nice. So we're going to just take a look at a couple simple bases and and take it from there. So let's go down the table. And All right with blood bowl bases this is pretty simple but um, there's a couple ways you can do it. Now first of all with these new models there's a hole here okay and the ball goes right in those holes okay so you got to kind of account for that. Now one way to do it is just to paint the bases completely green like I did on this guy all right, who's not done being painted but I just wanted to paint the base just for the heck of it and, and then put the decal right in this area. You want to put his number so you can keep track of him, which is a very important thing in the game. Having the numbers on the guys, you'll find that sometimes you'll have to keep on picking up the guy to see which guy it is, what number he is, so you can track if you know uh, his stats and so forth and so on, or you know, you know, as they get better as you play, and their stats go up. So you want to make sure that you are playing with the right player and that you intend to use. So sometimes just a really simple putting the green on and then just putting a big decal here so it's just easy so when you have the whole set up the board you don't have to keep picking up the guys. Now another way to do it is for instance this guy right here we just painted around the green edge and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some grass because grass looks a lot better but we want to make sure that we keep this hole plugged up so Let's uh, get this prepped up and let's put some grass on this guy. All right, the next thing you want to do is I, I put some paint on there. I painted underneath good green and then I have this toothpick in here so we keep the hole open. So the problem is is that you're going to keep putting the ball in and out of this. It's really going to turn out to be a problem eventually. So we got the grass on there and what I usually do is I kind of roll my paintbrush over it and just make sure that it gets in there real good and then we'll take it out and we'll just brush it off and we'll show you how the base turns out. So for the big finish here as you can do one way where you just have it a green base and then put the decal on the back here which will help identify it a lot easier or you can put the numbers pretty much on their backs or whatever on their shoulder blades and put down some nice grass. As you can see the grass looks a lot nicer but you want to make sure that you have that toothpick when you put the grass in so you can fit the ball in there. Um, that, that'll that probably wear out over time especially if it's one of your players that is going to constantly be catching the ball. Um, another thing that you can do that will kind of make it look nice if you wanted to is put some white lines across here to make it look like 
um, a football field. But I kind of like the way that looks right now. It really looks like he's running on some turf making a heck of a play. Or you can keep it simple and and all that really matters is how you like your team and how you play your team and that's how it's going to determine how they win. Of course, the better paint job that you have, the better they play it seems. Well, let's send it up top and get on out of here and uh, put a, a wrap on Blood. Well, there you have it. We really got it done, Sam. And uh, looks like we're back in the swing of things, which was really nice to get an entire battling brushes done. Thank you, everybody, for being so patient uh, during some very difficult times. And I'm very happy to have gotten this done. All right, so first off today, I just wanted to go over what I did on the Blitzer. Um, the reason I'm not showing the Blitzer on screen is because because of his pose, um, it would be really difficult to, at least I thought it would be really difficult to show you some of these you know, places where I had to uh, get in there uh, because the base would be in the way of me showing it to you. So I decided to uh, go ahead and just tell you what I did. Uh, so first of all, first off, the green was a wa flesh um, on that, and that was the first thing that I did. And then I did a green tone over that, which filled in a lot of those dark recesses. And then after that, after I had finished everything else, I went back and touched up those um, skin places with a little bit of War Boss Green to give it just uh, some added detail. The, um, the red armor is uh, just a layer, a base coat of uh, Mephiston Red with, um, let's see, where is it, some uh, Rune Fang Steel, very lightly dry brushed over it to give it a little bit of a red metallic look. And then the uh, metal parts uh, that are supposed to be really metal, you know, the spikes and the edges of the armor and all that kind of stuff is a lead belcher with uh, some Nuln Oil uh, over that with a very light, again, dry brush of Rune Fang Steel over it. Um, that is pretty much it. His uh, undershirt there, of course, is, is just Urshan Gray, dry brushed onto the black base coat. The uh, leather attachments, all of the belts and everything like that, is a, um, a Morn Fang Brown. Where is it? I don't have it. Yeah, it's right here. A Morn Fang Brown, and that's really all I did to it. And the britches, of course, is the regular Ustabi Bone with a uh, layer of seraphim sepia over it and then the tuft of hair coming off of his helmet is a uh, alien purple from war paints army painter and then i also did a oh where is it there it is a uh, purple tone over that and then just a very light dry brush of matte white on top of that so that's how i painted all of this guy um, all of the little um, parts on here. He, he was actually pretty fun to paint. Uh, I just didn't think it would translate very well to being on screen and you wouldn't be able to see very well. Now, what we're actually going to do for the rest of the time today, rest of my time today, is uh, we're going to take care of his base. Now, the base color I went ahead and put as a brown on his base here. And the reason I did that is because their field is a very dead looking field. It has a lot of browns and uh, grays and that type of stuff in it. So I thought a dark um, brown color for the base would be good. Uh, there's a little tuft of grass here on his boot, you know, right to the left of his boot. And I went ahead and painted that at a kind of a darkish gray and then put a coat of Nuln Oil over it just to look like it's, you know, kind of maybe rotted a little bit. Uh, what you can do is you can, first of all, just go get an old cereal bowl and or, you know, any other kind of Tupperware container or whatever you want to have. And then you put some gravel inside of that bowl like so. And that gravel can be, for example, this stuff is this Cinorama stuff that I got at Michael's. Uh, and, you can, and it comes in different grades as well. So you can buy kind of big rocks and stuff like that to uh, maybe uh, just provide some differentiation between model to model. And then I also have some washable school glue. That is this. And the reason I chose the washable school glue is because it's 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 very water soluble. So uh, you, all the excess stuff like the stuff the glue that's left in the brush that I'm going to use today, I'll be able to wash that out no problem with just some water. The brushes that you can use, you can pick up some of these at like uh, Michael's 
and you just throw them away. This is like a dollar for a whole bunch of uh, brushes, and so you can just use these, do an entire set, and then throw that one away. You've, you've used one out of the six, so you could use that, um, but as you can tell, the, the brushes are not very um, detail oriented and sometimes you want a little bit of a better brush so I'm just using this tester uh, brush that has a wide uh, level here it's a tester 8 and I'm going to use that to apply the uh, glue so the first thing you're going to do here is you're going to take your model and just provide a layer of uh, glue down onto that model and you just want to put it where you want the gravel and stuff like that to go but not anywhere else like for example on the sides you want to try to stay away from putting that on the sides as much as you can so that uh, you don't have to worry about cleaning it off later. Again, it's not that difficult to clean off, but uh, the less post work you, 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 you do, the better. And then once you have a layer of glue down there, it's really simple. You just stick it underneath and roll it around a little bit just so you get good coverage over the areas that you're looking for. Give a little bit of a shake inside there and you pull it out and you have a base. Now, as you can see, there's some stuff in there that we don't really want. So again, at the offset, you can use a number of different things. You can use the under end of your brush to kind of knock some of that stuff off so that it is not where you want it to be. Um, run your finger along the side. And again, this is where you gotta have to kind of make sure that uh, you're leaving what you want it to be, where you want it to be, and everything else stays there. So you just have to take your time with it and pull the stuff off where you want it to be pulled off. All that other stuff will stay there. You can see that it's it's not completely covered, but because that brown base coat was on the base before we put all this other stuff on, it's okay. So what I think I'm going to do here, uh, just to provide a little bit of differentiation here, I'm just going to take, take this little rock right here and put it on the back here, right behind where he stepped. So we're just going to put a dollop of glue on the bottom of it there, or what I want to be the bottom of it. You can make whatever... Uh, whatever side the bottom that you want and we're just gonna put it right on the back back here you know why would there be a big rock in the middle of the field well I don't know but it is an orc field so there could be any number of reasons why there's a rock in the middle of the field the fans could have thrown it there for all we know but uh, there you have it um, he is pretty much ready to go now, upon final inspection, if you really want, like if you see, like for example here, there's a couple of uh, rocks here on the bottom of his, his boot here. You can take them off. There we go. So you can just get it off of where you don't want it to be. Uh, I think that's about it, though. This is a pretty good... Uh, we, we laid the glue down pretty well on this one, so... I think it's pretty good to go. So those are some fundamental uh, elementary, I guess you could say, basing techniques that almost anybody can use. The materials that you need to do them are very inexpensive and easy to find just about at any hobby shop. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to help people get into the hobby of painting miniatures, putting them together, enjoying uh, the time that they can spend with uh, themselves, their family members, whatever it might be uh, that will you know, float that boat for you. So we hope that you've enjoyed the series of Blood Bowl and uh, we're gonna be getting a playthrough done here pretty quick. So keep your eye out for that. Until then though, we'll see you guys on the flip side and thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.